Our real time theme lesson for this week is entitled Christian Sacrifice and Leaf of Faith. God has called us to believe in Him and live for Him, even though it can be difficult. Have you guys noticed that Chris's head has been down all week? She has been like that all week. Even she's not doing any work. And nobody has asked her what's wrong or prayed with her? Nobody prays with anybody. That's weird. Well, where's your heart? What's her heart? Well, you need to get God's heart. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. When jet fighters were first invented, they flew much faster than the propeller planes that pilots had been used to. But still, both planes had an emergency eject system. Initially, the ejection simple system was simple. Push the button, clear the plane, and roll forward out of the seat so the parachute behind the seat could open. But leaving the security of the seat was easier said than done. It was one thing to push the eject button, quite another to release from the security of the seat. On several tests, it was found that pilots hung onto the seat during ejection, thus making it impossible for the parachute behind them to be released. The whole process of safe ejection was faulty, not because of mechanical problems, but because of the inability of the pilot to trust in those desperate moments the system designed for saving their life. They would not roll out of their seats. As you can imagine, when newer, faster jet planes were built, the need for more advanced ejection systems increased dramatically. As a result of this problem, the new jets were equipped with an ejection system that forced the pilot out of the seat, thus engaging the record of the parachute. The entire ejection process was a single fluid movement of machinery that launched the pilot from the plane, even nothing to the pilot's decision-making process. Now, pilots had no problem getting out of the seat because they were literally forced out. It seems as though pilots need something to force them out of their seats. And for us, the moments we are called to let go of our security and completely trust in God are big moments of faith. God's ejection design will not force us out of our seat. The leap of faith requires letting go. We have to make the leap, that leap of faith and trust God in what he says is right and watch the results in our life. What is it that we cling to for security? Is it friends? Even though they may be leading us in the wrong way, remember, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Our memory text for this week says, then he says to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke 9, 23. New King James Version. Hebrews 12, 1-3 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. New Living Translation Think about the great privilege to be an ambassador for Christ to the world. How do you prepare to share the good news of salvation and the hope of Jesus' soon return with the people around you? Will your friends think it is strange for you to talk about Jesus? If you look more carefully into the lives of our heroes of faith in the Bible, you'll find that there is more to their faith than the big sacrifice they made. In reality, their big moments are likely to be made up of smaller moments. Maybe what God really wants is for us to take a $100 bill to the bank and cash it in 
for 400 shiny quarters. Each day, it isn't hard to take the steps of faith a quarter at a time. Pray with someone in need. Apologize to someone you might have wronged in the past. Step out and visit a neighbor on your street and share what God has done for you. Give up something you really want so that someone can have what they really need. Make peace with someone who is your friendly. Forgive someone who has wronged you. Tell someone that you're a Christian, a follower of, a follower of Christ. Take a risk, a quarter at a time. Then when the big faith moments come, your reaction will be a no-brainer for you as well. My favorite text from Wednesday is 2 Chronicles 20, 20. It says, Listen to me, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will be successful. This means when we take a leap of faith and trust and follow Jesus, he promises us that we will be successful. What's going on? I'm not in the mood to talk about it. Okay, well, when you're in the mood to talk about it, I'm here for you. Jesus does not present to his followers the hope of attaining earthly glory and riches and of having a life free from trial, but he presents to them a privilege of walking with, the, with their master in the path of self-denial. Do you remember the father who pleaded with Jesus to cast the demon out of his son? And if you can, do something. Take pity on us. Help us. And if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father explained. I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. The man feels as if he doesn't have enough faith, but he does exactly what he was supposed to do. Bring his son to Jesus. Like Ruth in the Bible, I want to trust God with my life and do what he says to do. I want to go where he says to go, live where and how he says to live. I want to do my best for him. Will you choose to do the same for him? You know, Maya, my parents have been fighting and getting on my nerves a lot. Well, sometimes parents go through stress and everybody feels it. Would you like me to pray with you? Yes, that would really help a lot. Nothing else is working.